from New Zealand, from Randall and Scott, and Taylor Walters from South Carolina. Chip Milford. Giant Cameron. The players are ready. Are yeah. you ready? This is Meadow Lane, the home of Notts County. We are the Black and White Army. Come on, you boys!
Yes. 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 Yep. Welcome back to this portion. I'm with uh, my mentor and coach who helped me prepare for my time in Alicante City FC, Roy Winters from Edge of the Box. Hey mate, thank you for having me on. First question I want to ask you, obviously having the experience of a professional footballer, uh, what do you think differentiates an amateur footballer to a professional one? For me, it's probably the, the dedication and the sacrifice. I know that sounds a bit cliched. Uh, we've spoken about it at length. You've made one by moving from Asia to Europe to go and chase your dream. That's a huge sacrifice. Um, and I think oftentimes it's that, it's that consistency to keep making those sacrifices that eventually will get you to where you need to be in the end, most likely. Um, so let's if we take you as an example, if that is a professional contract, which is a dream, you will achieve it 
if you don't achieve it and you just miss, if I put that question back at you, what have you sort of achieved by moving to Spain? What have you accomplished by doing that? I think taking that sort of risk to move over to Spain has definitely challenged me, not only as a footballer, but as a person moving away from home, living by myself, trying to learn not only certain things about the game, the football itself, but also about myself, how I'm able to interact with different personalities, uh, adapting to different cultures and just... So I think that's that answers its own question, right? That's what you... The difference between an amateur and a pro is that discipline and the sacrifice and the consistency. But the discipline really is what's giving you the freedom to now see the whole world. So you've used football, which is my big terminology, which is, is what I live by, is use football before football uses you. Because football yeah. is inevitably going to use you. Your career can only be 15, 20 years long if you're the best of the best. So if you're at an amateur level right now and you dream of being a pro, then you have to sort of start dedicating yourself to being one already. Believe you are now. Believe you're yep. a pro already. Live that way. And then when you do sign a contract, it's all almost autonomous that you're already already in that sort of lifestyle. That would be my answer. Yeah, dedication, sacrifice, and commitment. Second question I have for you are: What are the three most important skills to master as a football player? So physically speaking, at the moment, I know there's a lot of debate about it here in England. I think it was Michael Owen um, came out and said, these days, all you need to be is an athlete. You don't need to be good at football to be a footballer anymore. Um, I don't agree with that. However, I would argue sort of partially that these days, the speed of the game and the, the pace it's moving and the tactical sort of awareness that you need as, to play as part of the system in football these days, I think you do need an, a, a fair bit of athletic prowess. That physically speaking, now you have to be as close to as good an all-round athlete as possible because of the speed of the game, nothing else. Um, two, let's go back to the mental side of the game. It's a bit of a buzzword, but it's... Well, I, I won't say I won't use... I was going to use resilience, but I won't use that. What I'll say is courage. I think you have to be brave, and I think you have to show courage as a footballer, and that comes whether that's on the pitch, on the training field, off the pitch, in the changing room. Sometimes they, they're quite hostile environments for a young man or a young woman to, to find themselves in, in those teams. So I think you have to have a lot of courage uh, in your own ability and conviction that you are good enough to be there, that you deserve that place. And I think once you have that, I think everyone else around you will then believe in you a bit more as well. In terms of football, it's a strange sport. that It's a, it's a team game, but it's an individually based because no matter what level you're at, you need a new contract or you need to be in the starting eleven. And there's only so many places, right? So I would say that courage and conviction in yourself is, is paramount to success. Again, I'm loath to say a cliche, which is coachable, but you have to want to learn. So whatever that looks like, I, I love players like yourself who've got a thirst for knowledge, who ask the questions, who, who, who probe and want more information from me as a coach, because it keeps me on my toes and it shows me that you're interested. Being coachable, what does that mean? For me, it means being an effective communicator and knowing what you want and why you want it and being able to sort of communicate that or if not communicate, then at least be able to show it to everyone else around you so people believe in you. Who do you think is the best player that you've ever coached and why? Paper, the best player I've ever coached is a, is a young man who's at Chelsea called Carney Um So I, I coached him when I was a PE teacher back in England. Now at the time he was... 13, 14 years of age. So I can't say he's the best player I've ever coached, but he's gone on to have mm. the best career so far. But in terms of Singaporean players and just on what they're doing and what they've done so far, I would have to say that Iksan's up there. Iksan Fandi is up yeah. there. Because what he did as a young man to go to Norway and it wasn't quite as successful as he wanted it to be, but then he came back to, to Asia and led the line for Singapore. But when he came to sessions with me in the big group setting, he raised the standards of everyone else around him. Ryan Stewart also does that. Jared Gallagher does that. Del Winder Singh does that. All these other boys do that as well. And I've seen mm. them firsthand that they drive people on. But I think the difference at that point in time, and these, you know, Ryan's gone abroad now. I'm sure Jared will in the future. Del's gone to play in Cambodia. Horace was the same. Horace Stewart will, will, I'm sure, go and play abroad and have a very successful career. They drive the rest of the group on in many different ways. But what Iksan did is he brought back an experience from abroad and put it right in the middle of Singapore and demanded more from those around him. 
what I wanted to do with Edge of the Box is having grown up in England and played in America, Canada, England, professionally, I wanted to instill a bit of that professionalism into the Singaporean system. Um, and that's not to say it isn't professional, and it is, and it's improving every single week, every year, I think, at the moment now. Mm. But there's certain facets of, um, I'd say, culturally, when I started with Edge of the Box anyway, that didn't demand as much of each other as possibly other places do. What Iksan had done by going to Norway and coming back is he brought the attitude of, even in a rondo at the start of training, it's super competitive. Now, for me, having not been raised in Singapore, having been raised in England, that's an yeah of course it is competitive that might be the it's most given, competitive yeah. part of training even you know like that's when everything starts so we're switched on and it's it's live or die by that however in singapore when i saw that happen it was very lackadaisical and lazy yeah. and it was a warm-up so i think yeah for me right now and i'm sure ryan stewart's going to do the exact same when he gets back from from thailand and drive standards up it was the fact that the x have been away come back and brought a very positive attitude to a difficult situation that he found himself in in Norway and has transferred that to become a star man in Thailand and lead the line for the national team. What is an aspect that is often overlooked by footballers seeking professional opportunities, in your opinion? Something that's really difficult, but I think it's being pushy. And I think it's not taking no for an answer. And that doesn't mean knocking on the same door a thousand times, but it might mean knocking on it a hundred before you move on to the next one. And I think that that's one thing that footballers, not just footballers, athletes, anyone really, your rejection can hurt you a lot. And then you get scared of that rejection or that feeling of rejection again. And all of a sudden you've moved to a new goal or, or a new vision that isn't true to you. But I think yeah. as a young footballer trying to be a pro, you have to know that that's coming. That's the yin and yang of, of life. You're going to get rejected more times. You're going to get accepted. However, that acceptance is just around the corner. A good example of that is, is Faisal that I trained. He's Singaporean. He went over to America after he did national service. College over there, played at college level, not at a high level, I don't think. Came back to Singapore with the one intention of becoming a professional footballer. 25 years of age. Now, how many people would have laughed at him? Probably a lot. Like, a lot will have gone, no chance, mate. 25? No, no way. He made it happen. Now, was he on £100,000 a week? And playing for Barcelona, no. But when he gets older, what, what can he tell his grandkids or whatever it might be? Can he tell them that he made it as a professional footballer? Did he go and make appearances in the SPL? Does he have a shirt with his name on the back? Yeah, he does. And he should be as proud as, in my opinion, at that age doing that is as big an accomplishment as you can have in football. And that was through, kept knocking on the door. You know, I probed him a bit and, and, and pushed him into it at times when I could see he was mm. maybe holding back and giving up. But, he kept going and he got the he got the reward. And I think that's where you find your, yourself right now is it's that fine line between not signing it and signing it. Mm. And if I had my time again as a young man, as a footballer, when I had offers to go and play abroad and I thought about it and I didn't quite do it and there's other things keeping me at home and uh, I, wish, I wish I had just gone and done it. I wish I'd have knocked yeah. on that home and chased it and don't let anyone tell you you can't do it because you can and you will. There's so many professional clubs out there. It just means you might have to do what you've done and travel. It might not be the dream place, but it will. you will be living your dream because that was your dream. As a little boy, you wanted to be a footballer. So you didn't want to be a footballer just in Singapore or just in the Premier League. You wanted to be a footballer to enjoy kicking a, a ball, right? So keep knocking on doors and, and don't give up. Don't give up. There's one piece of advice you could give to Singapore footballers currently. I think you just have to look, look at those who who are in the position that you want to be in. So if that is Ryan playing over in Thailand, if that is Dell playing in Cambodia, if that is any of the boys at LCS, and you want to go and play for the best team in Singapore or Albrecht now, then you have to watch the players that are in that position and then you have to work out how you can be better than them because they're already there and they will get favoured because of that. You need to be better. So how do I get better than them? Do I have to do it? What are they doing? So are they eating the right things? Maybe, maybe not. Are they sleeping the right amount of time? Who knows? Are they training and then doing a bit extra after it? Well, I know some of those boys definitely are. They definitely are. Are they pushing themselves beyond what is comfortable? Well, yeah, especially the ones who've gone abroad. They definitely have. So are you doing as much? Are you prepared to do as much as they are and then more? Because you have to take the shirt off. If you have the natural ability and the work ethic, you're going to surpass them pretty quick. 
And then remember, after that, there's going to be someone underneath you who's biting at your ankles to try and get your spot. Yeah. So it's, that's the way it is. It's dog eat dog, right? And it's a pyramid of life almost within a football system. So what I would say is, you don't have to go abroad to do it. You can look locally if you want. Going abroad will help as well, as, as we know. But you can look locally at who is in your position, study them, try and find out a few things about how they live their life, but then be better at everything than they are. I advised you to do a good piece on Dral Anwar, wasn't it? Because we yeah. said he came from the lower levels up to the top and now he's scoring, scoring against Tottenham, scoring goals for the national team, playing for the best club in Singapore. Now, you should be looking at him and going, well, what's he done? How's he got there? And why can't I do that? You know, he, look like a, he looks like a very good professional footballer to me. Like he's He looks super healthy, he looks fit, fast, strong, and he's doing it. He's proving it, that he's good enough. So how do you become the next version of him, but the better version of him? I had friends, yeah. I was 15, who played in the first team in the championship level in England, and they didn't play again after they were 17 because they, they developed quick. Then it went to the head, and all of a sudden, they were left with nothing at, at 17. So... Football moves in mysterious ways as well. If you stay, go back to it, consistent, dedicated, you know, and make sacrifices, the cream does rise to the top most of the time. So that'd be my answer to that one. So lastly, obviously, if you haven't followed him on Instagram, I'm going to pop it up right now. Moving forward with Edge of the Box, it seems like you have a bit of a teaser coming up on the 29th of February. Yeah, well, thank you for those kind words, uh, first of all. I appreciate that and I've enjoyed working with you and I'm sure we'll carry on. And that's what I'm here to do is, is to help young younger footballers or any footballer try and improve in one way or another, however I can do that. And I think you've been a fine example of someone who's willing to push themselves beyond what is not really done before. You know, you, you, you're a champion for Singapore football, whether you make it as a pro in Singapore or not, you really are championing people leaving and, and coming back better as people and as a player so first of all well done on that in terms of edge of the box yep as i said i would had it a little bit difficult since i moved back to england first i did a few talks with the premier league um i'm now working with a few of the football league clubs doing mentoring on their behalf as well but my my aim is to go back into a, a coaching role most likely and that might entail going back to asia at some point but in the meantime before i get there i do want to keep helping as many players as possible whether that be in Singapore or England or, or anywhere in the world so edge of the box is about to kind of change to become a bit more accessible for more people at least at a base level it's going to be a, a product launching that will be open to anyone to purchase um, and then on the back of that there'll be opportunities to work with me on a more one-on-one -on -one basis but I'm hoping that the the base level offer that I'm about to provide will give a, a huge huge insight into the mindset and the psychological sort of advances in football for younger and, and any any footballer, whatever stage of your career you're at, um, through an online platform that I'm, I'm well along in the development of. And we're going to be talking to sort of English Premier League footballers, um, coaching staff, players over in Asia, um, scouts, parents of players, just the whole sort of journey around be, becoming a footballer and, and staying as a footballer and even coming out of football and what that looks like. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited. It's, it's taking shape. I don't want to give too much away right now, but it'll be um, kind of a monthly platform that's accessible to all at a, a pretty affordable or very affordable price. So as many people can benefit from it as possible. And then if you want to work with me a bit closer and, and gain a bit more of my expertise as me and you have in the past, then Obviously, there'll be, there'll be a space and a, and a time to discuss that further. Every time I have a chat with you, I feel like I'm able to learn something new. And I feel like our conversations are very productive. And this, for my viewers as well, will be fantastic for them, I feel like. And guys, please go and check him out. Link will be in the description. Check out his Instagram. And when, when the full launch comes out, I will also include it in a future video. Today is the 7th of January 2024, the time now is 12.20pm on the way to Nottingham Forest FA Cup tie versus Blackpool. I'm gonna get on the bus now, I'm gonna vlog the whole match experience and let's see how it goes. So yeah, let's go.
up there. Oh. Are you 
believes in you. You've lost again and again and again. The lights are cut off, but you're still looking at your dream, reviewing it every day and say to yourself, it's not over oh, until I win. win. What a goal! And what a time! And what a place! What a place! Happy with us. Take that.